Hey guys, welcome to another video. Today, we're gonna be looking at texel density, but not really just texel density, kind of like how I visualize texel density or how I look at it from through my eyes. Hopefully this is helpful to you guys. Just as a quick little breakdown, we're gonna be looking at the definition of texel density, uh, how I look at texel density, which is in more of like a volume, three-dimensional way of looking at texel density, as well as what happens when you scale your mesh. Uh, when a mesh gets larger and when it's smaller, what, what is your texel density doing? And then when it's a good time to start going generic with your materials in order to maintain texel density, keep a, a good looking asset going. Also a quick shout out to the asset we're using in our little preview today with Tobias. I'll have his link in the description below. You can check out his art station. Thanks again, Tobias. So texel density as a definition, um, this is my own definition, so take it you know, how, how I've written it. <laughs> Unifying all of your assets to be the same or close to the same UV scale within a pixel to centimeter ratio. So when you have a grid and you've got a, a single grid tile that's a meter by meter, if this is 512 per meter, that's uh, for this length of the grid, there should be 512 pixels in that length, right? And then same with this direction. So if you have a asset that is two meters wide and two meters tall, if you keep it at the 512 per meter, that means you would probably have to have a 1024 texture in order to try and keep it within or close to the 512 per meter texel density rule that you've set. Okay, so let's look at how I perceive texel density in a more kind of volumetric way. We could see we've got a scene here. We've got this cube here. So this cube, I've divided it and you can see we're gonna take the same kind of ratio, right? So one square here is 512 by 512, because this is a meter in length. So this cube is two meters by two meters by two meters. And if you think about that as like your texel density in a cube form, that might help you understand a little bit more about what's going on with texel density. So if we go into x-ray mode and we look at this asset, you can see that this asset is small enough to fit inside of that, that single plane. And if you look from the top view, it fits inside of that one as well. So this is kind of a volumetric representation of how I would look at texel density. And with that being said, if that's a 512 and you can see the size of a character here, that means that you can actually texture this, this single piece here as a one zero to one texture. And that would be good enough, especially at the size of this character. If you were playing third person and your character was this big, that's how big the asset is, right? So you don't need as much detail. You don't need the resolution to help you sell all of the information on there. Detail normals are great. Those, those will help carry it even further, but you just need a zero to one with this one. This is where breaking down the asset into like sub pieces that you can add different materials to that are maintaining the same texel density as the previous assets is uh, that's where it'll start helping you maintain quality overall here. If we look at this from the front view and we go to see through, let's uh, visualize this piece here. So if we grab these two, you can see like I can probably get all of those pieces inside of this or even possibly inside the 512 space, right? So maybe these can be baked out as a 512 normal map and or texture for these, or maybe we go to a 1024. But the other thing is maybe we take all of these uh, minus the tire. The tire, I would probably put the texture of a, a tire strip that tiles along this, and that's reused on other tires throughout whatever you're making. But these other elements, maybe they're all packed together minus these guys likely don't need a, a normal bake. Maybe the little piece over here might. These could stay excluded from the normal map bake. And these smaller details can get all of the normal map information and unique texturing to carry them, as well as like this piece. Those, those two pieces alone would probably carry the detail of the asset enough that you can maintain the texel density at not as much of a cost in, in textures as maybe the previous asset. So it starts to get uh, more complicated as you get larger. As you can see here, this asset is way bigger. Now, when you get an asset this large, this is likely when your asset will get very, very generic. And generic is not a bad thing, right? So if we bring this guy forward and you can see here, bringing this over, this is like, the resolution required in order to uniquely texture this is gonna be way too high. There's a lot of sharing you can do in order to try and cut down on texel density space. So like these, these flaps, for example, these little cover pieces, these can be, you could build one of them, maybe likely the open one, 
and then you can duplicate that and place it on these other two three for the cost of one maybe this cap top should be separate that way you don't see the three duplicated these these larger pieces right these aren't gonna these aren't gonna fit these aren't gonna fit in this in a in a 1024 by 1024 at least it doesn't look like it this could warrant depending on like what's going on this could warrant you making a 2048 although i would say that's quite high res uh, you could make a 1024 for a normal map bake and then use that same packed map to add the the roughness variation and differences between all of the elements and then you start getting into the the territory of uh, making tileable materials that you can assign to your pieces so like this is when likely you would group all of your metal pieces together and group all of your rubber type elements together that way you can kind of have a unified roughness uh, range that you're working inside of uh, and not having to deal with metallic versus metallic and then with these larger elements you can see these pieces here these would go almost completely generic with the caveat that they have a ambient occlusion bake as well as a uv set that the ambient occlusion is using but the uv set is also being used to create masks where you can uh through the shader push the detail further so as you can tell like as the asset gets bigger it's not so much about the texture resolution that you're using but the shaders are starting to do the heavy lifting right when it comes to these types of details up here maybe instead of paying for a normal map it's probably better to just model the detail like if that edge would have had a would have had a bevel to describe how soft the the rounding is there maybe you just put a bevel there and then you use face weighted normals to get the curve around there so that it looks higher res than it actually is and then all of these other elements you've got these guys are either uniquely baked or have their own set and details that you're allowing through that material so you've got two materials and then you have the the tire as well which at this size, this is a pretty high res tire at that point, right? Likely you're you're modeling extra details in here, but the, the rubber for the, the tire itself and the tread is gonna be likely a tileable uh, treaded texture to make that work. And don't forget detail normals. These, those are gonna help you maintain a consistent visual quality that will help uh, bridge the gap between any irregularities that might be either subtle or not as subtle as they should be in the textile density difference between these two assets. Now, one thing you'll notice is when we have the asset this large, right now you're only seeing three meshes, right? And that's not realistic. This is, what is this just gonna be one generic material? How does that even work? How are you gonna keep that resolution? These are the guys right here. These are uniquely unwrapped of course these are going to be uniquely unwrapped as well so that we can utilize like a mask control for roughness variation and and adding a detail or dirt or grime in, in mask form these ones are going to be uniquely baked and we'll be uh, utilizing the same approach and these ones will be the tileable tire texture i was talking about but if you look at this asset this is actually how it would be broken down so of course again got the tires right then we've got these, uh, the small pieces, which would be uniquely unwrapped and then baked. These ones would have their own zero to one. All of these would have their own zero to one UV set. But then it's like when you get to this scale, this is where multi UV sets really come in handy because you can take all of these, maybe these guys, uh, maybe even all of them in one UV set could be packed. Uh, likely this one will be separate now that I think about it. So this one will be separate. It'll have its own UV set zero, which will be a unique pack. And then it'll have another UV set that's texel density correct to the 512 that we were talking about earlier. So then all of these pieces follow the same suit. They all have a, a UV set that's unique. That's for mask usage, ambient occlusion bakes, any variety in the surface detail that you wanna add through uh, roughness and whatnot will be in that UV set. Whereas the UV set one, will be for being texel density correct in the UV. So UV zero, zero to one, and then UV one is texel density correct UVs. And that's why you start seeing these texel density tools in, in multiple 3D programs now, is they basically just take the UV scale and they scale it physically to match the size that you are describing, which if we say 512 per meter, if you take this, we bring this in, and let's just bring it down here so we can measure with it. From here to here, if you made this texel density correct in the texel density UV tool, 512 per meter, from here to here, there should be 512 pixels in that length, right? 
So that's why when you use a Texel density tool to scale your UVs, it scales them all uniformly to be uniform to each other in physical space. And then also matches the, the size or ratio that you would set, which in our example is 512 per meter. So it's quite large. Let's, uh, let's grab this character just for really driving it home. And with this, this is where you start running into shader and texture bloat. So you have to be really careful and not end up ballooning shaders and texture calls the more that you introduce generic materials. So generic materials, uh, just as a quick definition, we'll go into it further and deeper in the next video. The idea is that a generic material could uh, be using tileable materials for say, these are all rubber. Let's, let's pretend these, all these pieces are rubber. We've got a 512 rubber material that's uh the albedo the roughness and the normal right and then a detail normal inside of that material so it's four textures and then we have a, a uv set zero normal map bake for all of these as well that would be five textures for just this piece and if you start running the numbers and you get a different detail normal for everything you're looking at a ton of textures here right so in the next video, I'm going to try and uh, break down ways to cut down on shader counts or reuse some textures in order to make that a little bit cheaper. Thanks again to Tobias for the uh, asset. You can find his art station in the description below. And uh, hopefully this helped you understand Texel density a little bit better. Remember that in the description below as well, there are links to other resources that involve Texel density and how they work with it and how they've described it. Hopefully this has been helpful to you guys. Until then. I'll talk to you guys later.